Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to St. Anne's as we prepare ourselves for our liturgy of the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're ever so grateful for all of your presence as we gather as a community of faith and prayer, and we thank you. We celebrate this weekend World Marriage Day. We bestow blessings on those married couples who give their hearts and their love to one another and to God within the sacrament of marriage. Our celebrant and homeless today is Father Jason. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 497, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is so good to be back with you all and praying with you all this morning. As we gather as a community, we always pause for a moment to call to mind the many gifts we've received throughout the week, but we also call to mind the times where maybe we have not always used those gifts the way that we should. So we pause and ask for God's love and mercy to transform our hearts. Lord Jesus, you cleanse us from our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you may cleanse us the reign of God among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, your presence heals our souls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. 
take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me to you, my guilt I covered not. I said I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as am I, I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to the Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed, and that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in the deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As a Jesuit, one of the assignments that I have have always been on the East Coast. So maybe in Chicago or in New York City, Jersey City, Boston, here in beautiful Syracuse. But my one real missionary assignment came in August of 2020, in the middle of the pandemic. I was assigned to the island of Saipan in the Western Pacific Ocean, which is by Guam. Now, for any of you who might have studied World War II, Saipan was home to a large battle where over 3,000 Marines died in 1944. It takes a long time to get to this island, about 25 hours of flying on four different flights. So I arrived at 6 a.m. in the morning in Saipan, exhausted and weary, never been to this island before, and we're greeted as we get off the plane by all the employees of the airport dressed in head to toe with protective personal equipment. Like it was like a scene out of E.T. when the government invades the house. All of us were treated like we were the most contagious people in the world. Because Saipan doesn't have a very good health care system, they wanted to make sure there was no spread of the virus. So everybody who arrived on the island had to be in quarantine for the first five days that they were there. So all of us on the plane were put into vans, and with a police escort, we were escorted to the other side of the island and put into a quarantine area. We had our own rooms at a hotel that the government had taken over, which wasn't bad because it was, I had my own room facing the Pacific Ocean, and food was delivered to me for six days. 
It was nice, but it was also not the welcome that you're hoping for when you're in a new place. I think the writer of Leviticus that we heard in our first reading would have liked this system because it tried to keep people healthy. The only thing missing was me wearing a sign that said unclean across it. All these regulations that we lived through for so many years were meant to keep people safe, but they also changed the way we interact with each other. And it happened very suddenly. It was a hard transition for many people, emotionally and mentally. And it just offers us a glimpse of what people living with leprosy would have experienced. If you contracted leprosy, you couldn't be part of the community anymore. You had to shout, unclean, unclean, if you were, people were coming near you. And what probably hurt more than anything else is that the laws around all of this came from scripture. It came from the word of God. And since these laws about what made someone unclean were, it was in the word of God, it was also associated that not only were you physically unclean, but you probably did something to deserve it. So there was something morally wrong with you as well. There was a sin that was the reason why you were this way. This leprosy made people excluded, not only from practical life, from regular life, to keep other people safe, to keep them safe from disease and from sin. These laws in Leviticus told people how to behave, how to treat others, how to stay clean, how to stay safe. And then along comes Jesus. Jesus is working all these miracles, and what we just heard in the gospel that Deacon Bob read for us was the first chapter of Mark. Mark is urgent to tell the message of who Jesus is and what he's about. It starts right with the baptism of Jesus. Then he starts healing Simon Peter's mother-in-law. He cures someone possessed by demons. And then it ends this first chapter with this healing of a man with leprosy. So the word of Jesus is spreading quickly. Today, this unnamed leper comes up to Jesus and kneels in front of him. So right away we know he isn't observing the law of staying away from people. And he says to Jesus, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretches out his hand, touches him, and says, I do will it, be made clean. I do will it, be made clean. He's so close that Jesus can physically touch him. Imagine how long it has been since someone had dared to touch this unclean man. But Jesus doesn't hesitate. Jesus just stretches out his hand and touches him and heals him. Jesus isn't concerned about being unclean. Not because he couldn't get sick, but because he knows these labels mean nothing in the kingdom of God that he is here to preach. The kingdom of God which Jesus preaches is radically inclusive. It includes all of creation. Everyone is invited to be a part of it. No one should be left out. Only those that want nothing to do with the kingdom, that work against God's project here on earth, can be excluded. And still today, Jesus wants to heal us from whatever we think is keeping us from being part of this kingdom. And Jesus especially wants to heal those who have been told they don't belong in the kingdom. And we do a really good job sometimes of telling people they don't belong. Maybe because of their race, their gender, their sexuality, their disability. Something that we think is other. And maybe you don't fit in here. Jesus challenges us to think differently. Every time we read the gospel, it is a challenge to us to become a more welcoming and inclusive people. As a community of faith, when we gather around this altar, 
We remember what Jesus did for us. We remember his ministry, his miracles and healings. We remember his passion and death and resurrection. And we remember what he invites us to do in memory of him, when we are called to imitate him by our words and actions. And when we, when we remember all of this, we should be moved to reach out our hands to those asking to be made whole, to be made part of the kingdom, to be made part of the community, to bring them into this space where we know and trust God's healing power can indeed create something new. Together, let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us come with jubilation into the presence of the Lord who calls us and gives us fullness of life as we bring our petitions forward. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our shepherds of the church, may the purity of our God guide them in their ministries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are living in the margins of society, may their needs be provided for, we pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that they may witness to the beauty of married life as a participation in God's love and inspire others to lovingly and faithfully live out their vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The communicants of St. Anne's, May the transforming message of the gospel fill our hearts with love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all of those who are sick, may they feel the healing hand of our God, especially for those who are listed in our prayer list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of those who have died, may they find eternal rest in God's kingdom, especially for Robert Neperala on this one year anniversary, Wally McCray, and for Franklin Gaglione, for whom this Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The sanctuary lamp will be burning this week in loving memory of Father Kevin Hannon. And we now pray for the intentions that we offer in the silence of our own hearts. And we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All-powerful God, you govern the nations with love. Listen to our prayers and show the fullness of your reign. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in our offertory hymn, number 492, Love Burn Bright. Christ 
starlight illuminate every path that leads to you. Give us grace, Lord, guide our way. Love burn bright in your light, Lord, every day, every way we follow you. Grant us peace to journey through. Love burn bright from the shadows of the night to your Grace, Lord, guide our way. Love burn bright in your light, Lord, every day. Every way we follow you. Grant us peace to journey through. Love burn Pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise and glory of his name for our name and the holiness of the church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the community of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. body of Christ, we pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Communion hymn is found at 616, I Have Loved You. love 
I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you and you are mine. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you Please welcome our children's choir to come up to sing a special song they've been practicing for today.
Well, that was great. Let's pray. <laughs> Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements are scheduled for Ash Wednesday that's coming up this Wednesday for Ashes is 7 o'clock uh, communion service in the morning, then the 9 o'clock mass in the morning, and then 5.30 in the evening for Mass and Ashes. And um, during Fridays uh, throughout Lent, as uh, we have been doing throughout the years, we will have Stations of the Cross at 7 o'clock. So it'd be great to see everybody come out for Station 7 o'clock on, on Fridays. And uh, just so you don't come on, on um, Wednesday evening looking for a soup supper, we are not having soup supper on Ash Wednesday this year, uh, but we will be doing it on one of the Fridays with um, Stations of the Cross. Thank you. And one last. Just want to let you all know we're going to be doing our children's liturgy again next weekend, and we are bringing the puppets back. So we have a children's puppet liturgy. We're trying to do it once a month. And I just want to put out there to any teens who would like to help be a puppeteer, it's a lot of fun. It's easy to learn. Um, you can get a hold of the office, and, and I can get back to you. So next week at 11 o'clock Mass, we'll have a puppet children's music liturgy downstairs at 11 o'clock. With coffee and donuts to follow. Donuts. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. Please join us in our closing hymn, number 523, By Our Love. Christians by our love.